Welcome everybody to a new episode of Flower Circus Talks. Today a very special guest and I'm very honored that she wants to join the show. It's uh, Laura Rivel from the PMA. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about uh, the market in the United States, what the PMA does for their um, people. So uh, let's quickly invite her and uh, so we, she can tell all about it. Laura, welcome. Thank you, John. It's really nice to have you in the Flower Circus Talks. I'm, yes. I'm pleased to be here. Yeah. I see you've got some beautiful hydrangeas in your room. I do. I do. That's my favorite flower. Okay. Yeah, they, they look great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Playing that just for you. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, how are you? How's the family? How's the health? We're all doing good. We're we're still uh, sheltering in place here in uh, Pennsylvania, and uh, my family as well. And uh, you know, we are anxious to get outside. Fortunately, uh, we have a, a nice yard where we can uh, play outside and do a lot of gardening. So yeah, I, I'm okay. I'm feel very grateful for that. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Uh, Juan David is saying hello. Hi, thank, hi, thank, Juan David. <laughs> thank you for joining. <laughs> So, first of all, for the people uh, probably in Europe, can you explain a little bit more about yourself? Uh, because you've been in the flower industry already for many years. And about the PMA. I'd be happy to. Um, spent uh, about 20 years in the floral supply chain, uh, working on either the supply side or the buy side. Yeah. As a merchant, a buyer, a supplier. Um and uh, a lot of time in retail. So um, it's been a culmination and um, I'm happy to be able to serve PMA and support the members in a position where I used to be um, yeah. because I understand the needs of our members, whether they're on the retail side or the supply side or the solution side. Yeah, I think that's a great plus that you've been there already and, and you know what, yeah. what they want and what they expect. Yeah, it, it's helpful um, to understand where they are and meet them where they're at. Um, yeah. The Produce Marketing Association is a global trade association um, with over 53,000 member contacts and wow. over 2,900 uh, member companies. And that's representing every sector of the produce and floral supply chains. Um, so growers, shippers, solution providers, retails, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And um, what we do is to serve our members is to be a convener and a connector and provide tools and resources for them to grow and expand their businesses. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, that, that's a lot of work, I, and especially now, I think. It is. It is. Um, we've been... <laughs> Becky and I work really hard every day to meet our members where they're at and and support their needs uh, wherever that may be. Yeah. But the last eight weeks have been especially challenging for our members here in the U.S. and yeah. globally. Uh, uh, you know, whether it's South America, Canada, uh, we have several members in in the Netherlands, um, California. You know, domestic Ecuador, Colombia. So it, it's yeah. been very challenging, but it's also been rewarding at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine this. There's a lot of things to do. I mean, there's so much information and it's changing all the time, especially in the beginning. Moment to moment. <laughs> yeah, it was unbelievable. Uh, Marco is also from Hilverda de Boer, USA. Good morning, Marco. Hi, Marco. <laughs> so... Um, the moment uh, COVID-19 struck in the USA was around uh, the Easter time, right? Yeah, to actually just before Easter, we uh, I kind of mark it by our last day in the office when we were yeah. uh, told to shelter in place at home. So uh, my last day in the office was March the 13th. Um, yeah. And it was that Monday, I think that was a Friday, that Monday, um, Becky and I, you know, had a powwow and decided we need to start reaching out to our members, every yeah. single one of them. Yeah. And so we took that time. We have over 220 floral members globally. <laughs> um, 
we're, you know, we're trying to balance that right now. We have a lot of people that are very nervous. Um, and like I said, the outreach helps them to figure out where we can be of value to them. Yeah. yeah. So that was a month before Easter. Um, and those four weeks leading up to Easter were very, very uncertain as we still yeah. are, you know, we're, we're moving moment to moment. Yeah. Um, so. Because yeah, because it's also uh, every state it's different. Yes, every state, every jurisdiction, even down to the township. Um, so what's what's happening in uh, New York is not necessarily what's happening in Texas or Los Angeles or Miami. Yeah. Um, and so you know where most of our supply base comes into. Uh, Miami has different restrictions and production restrictions that impacted. Um, the supply chain. Yeah. And one of the things you started to do uh, with the PMA were the, the roundtable talks, right? Yes. Yeah, the roundtable talks were born out of COVID-19. Um, we just finished our eighth uh, roundtable yesterday, which was very successful and very uplifting considering where we started um, yeah. on that very first week. Yeah, it's uh, the emotions, I think, but that's all over the world, went from, from, from nothing or below zero. And I can't say that everybody is, is happy now at the moment, but at least we see some end at the, at the tunnel. And I think most of the people are, do, are in the flower industry, and I can't say everybody, but they are doing better than they expected a month ago. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more, John. What we heard on the call yesterday was was uh, demonstrated that when you have seven retailers saying, I, 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 I could have sold the dirt off the floor at the end yeah. of the day. Um, that, that, really struck, that really struck us. Um, and that gave us a lot of optimism for the future. Uh, when this whole thing began, we started to think about how can we help uh, our members. And so we commissioned a consumer sentiment survey yeah. Uh, to support our members. Uh, and that was additionally to the Joy of Fresh campaign to help drive consumption yeah. during this crisis. Yeah, I mean, it was unbelievable. All seven of the retailers said they had a, a great sales. Some of them even said, okay, by noon, uh, it was already sold out. Yeah, uh, yeah. And and the, the, the sales online were even even better. <laughs> yeah. And, and what was interesting to us on the e-com side was they're usually a, a 48 hour window of sell through. So yeah. they, they, they plan for that and they get it in and they get it out. They were sold out by Tuesday before the mother's day holiday. And now they're starting to reevaluate and they're already taking orders up to two weeks out, which is very unusual for, uh, I'll use Urban Stems, it was, yeah. is our e-com, they're a very prominent member, and Michael Forrest was um, very insightful, and, uh, you know, we've all had to pivot, whether you're a supplier, a retailer, uh, a trade association, we've yeah. all had to pivot and learn to adapt in this yeah. environment to support each other. Yeah, yeah, it was... Uh... Yeah, I was really surprised with the, the enthusiasm of the, all the people. And, and also, uh, everybody knows that the summer is, is a low period. If yeah. we talk about normal sales, uh, of course, normally there will be weddings and, and big events. That's uh, For now, it's not going to happen. But also, the people said, we're looking forward to that period because we think uh, we will have better sales than normally. And um, that's something we're going to talk about uh, again next on next week's call. We're going to take what the retailers said there and really yeah. start that forward thinking to get them to pivot. Because with summer being um, a slow time, I don't think it's going to be. And when you hear the retailers say that, that's very encouraging. Yeah. Um, you know, people are going to be staying at home. There's how can we create a florication yeah. <laughs> um, uh, in those staycations? Uh, there's going to be a huge emphasis on homesteading and garden outdoor. Uh, if that's all you can do, 
then that's where we need to be. That's where we need yeah. to meet the consumer. Yeah. And uh, we're very, very excited about that. I'm going to tease a little bit next week. We're going to get into that a little further. Um, yeah. So you'll have to tune in to see what that entails. Yeah, yeah, we'll certainly do. I mean, it's uh, a big, uh, uh, yeah, inspiring uh, roundtable. Actually, you hear so many uh, things, so many great people over there are willing to share some information. And I think that's what we need to do now because uh, we need to get out of this uh, altogether. I think now more than ever, we realize how global we really are and yeah. how connected we all are. And if COVID-19 hasn't brought that to the surface, I don't know what will. Um, so as an industry, we are, we're together. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to get through this. And um, it, it was evidenced yesterday in that call. Yeah. Yeah. I also heard that uh, some flower shops in, in some states was last minute opening just a few days before Mother's Day, they yeah. could open. And, and uh, they, they didn't even have the time to, to set up for, for Mother's Day, unfortunately. No, that's very unfortunate fortunate for the retail floors. They, they have been struggling um, because they were deemed non-essential in many states. And yeah. when you only have the opportunity to open the Wednesday before the holiday, that gives you really no time to prepare um, the care and handling of the product that you're going to be using, um, that yeah. you want to have the customer to have a positive experience with. Yeah. So um, that's, that's very sad and um, unfortunate for a lot of the retail florists across the U S. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's hope they, uh, they manage and they survive and uh, because we need them. We do. Yeah. We do. We need the wholesalers. We need the retail florists. We need the mass market. We are all together. And as one industry, we need to demonstrate that. Um, yeah. It can't be every man for himself. Yeah. One of the, the things I uh, thought was very interesting, that they said the high uh, before Mother's Day, everybody was buying the, the, the lower price bunches. Right. But during Mother's Day, all the the, the higher uh, the high end lines were sold out the first. Yeah, and and what we saw what we saw leading into the holiday was the customer, um, the the traditional flower purchaser, um, yeah. the uh, was was trading down. They were looking for value for big bunches for long lasting, longer shelf life um, items, and on during the holiday all of the retailers noted that they saw the customer trade up. Um, and that what that tells us is that the customer is willing to celebrate Yeah. that. And, and that mom is worth it. Yeah. <laughs> um, we heard on one call, you know, mom was the original first responder and um, in a lot of ways yeah. she is. Yeah. Um, uh, so we did see a lot of more expensive items move um faster than we anticipated yeah and, and that's and that's great i mean in in times like this and that's uh, the flowers can bring so much joy uh, to the people uh, yeah that, that's great yeah i think we need to keep reminding the cut the the consumer and each other that we are essential that yeah. flowers are essential to health well-being um bring the outside in uh, yeah. uh, or, or enhance your environment while we're in this scenario um, because they can do wonderful things for people. I don't know many products that can change an attitude in about three seconds when you present somebody with a flower, a bouquet, a plant. Yeah. Um, it really does make a difference. And there's one study that even shows that uh, that feeling stays for three days. If you give a woman a plant or a flower, that, that great feeling stays for three days. I mean, the, the, I, I think I almost have a, a daily shout out to the people and telling, okay, we're spending a, millions <laughs> on, a, on healthy food, on a gym or a, a, now going to the gym. I don't know if everybody's going to the gym, but at mm. least we spend a lot of money right. there. Uh, why don't we spend more, more money on flowers? I mean, for a healthy lifestyle, there are so many studies saying if you have a plant in the room, uh, the air quality is better. You feel better there. So people need to have that uh, in their minds as well. So 
a house without a plant or without a beautiful hydrangea should be uh, seen as an unhealthy house. That was one of those more expensive items we were referring to. Yeah. <laughs> um, I came home from the store and uh, looked at my son and my husband and my daughter and said, you know, there's these really beautiful hydrangeas uh, at our local retailer and somebody better come in the door with one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's so one, yeah. Um, that's a great segue into our Joy of Fresh campaign, which was born out of COVID-19. That was uh, something that we wanted to meet. There was a demand for a consumer messaging campaign, and yeah. we've delivered that uh, as, a, as part of a toolkit. Um, I'm, I'm trying to send you one here. Let's see if I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to see if you can pull it up. But uh, that campaign gave our members um, a platform and tools that they could use in their messaging. And we've partnered with Sprout House Agency to push that out through floral influencers across the US. Yeah. Um, we had a recent article in House Beautiful and we've been doing a lot on Instagram with that um, hashtag Joy of Fresh. So I encourage everyone who's listening um, today to hashtag Joy of Fresh, whether it's yeah. produce or floral or a great meal that you've made with flowers and food together. Um, I would love to see that. Yeah. So Wimbos is asking, uh, what's the best way to promote our cuts and medium in the USA? Actually, Juan David is already answering him. But I think if you use the hashtag, uh, Wim, it can help a bit. And uh, I think you will have a new member because uh, Juan David is saying PMA has all the, uh, the tools to do so. So uh, thank you, Juan David. <laughs> I miss your coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he never gives me coffee. I don't oh. know. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No. <laughs> now he will, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, Willie is actually uh, also answering him, and they are perceived as expensive. And I think with also the the air freight rates at the moment, right? They are they are, but most of the flowers are more expensive uh, because of that. So what we've also done is any member who wants to um, customize the Joy of Fresh yeah. has sent us an image. Um, many of our growers are commodity specific, um, whether it's chrysanthemums, hydrangeas, orchids, and uh, we've been able to turn that around and send it back to them so that they can use it in their own messaging. And that's, that's been really great. helpful. We've, we've transformed many. Um, we've gone way beyond roses, succulents, and sunflowers. We're yeah. into, um, we've done orchids, hydrangeas, and I would like to see that cymbidium come across the wire. Um, and we'll make it happen. Yeah. No, we will send it. And uh, more coffee is coming our way <laughs> for both of us. <laughs> so that's great. <laughs> I, think I, I think I exposed him. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No sugar or milk for me, uh, Juan David. <laughs> Alison Bradley is, uh, is saying hello, Alice, oh, hello, Alison. Uh, thank you for joining. Hi, thank you. Welcome. Yeah. yeah. So actually, uh, you also did a study on uh, uh, what, how the the the, the purchases in, or how COVID influenced the purchases. Yes. Yeah. PMA. Um, just a, a little background. Uh, this year alone, PMA is investing more than $200,000 in consumer research. And wow. um, this, the report that you're referring to will be, um, will be featured on next week's town hall. In addition yeah. to, um, you know, turning that mindset around to uh, how do we capture those impulse buys and how do we continue to celebrate uh, yeah. floral every day, not just on holiday. Um, so we commissioned a consumer sentiment uh, research study toward floral products during COVID-19 crisis. And we compared the U.S., U.K., and Germany. And yeah. um, what we saw, um, I will hide it's myself. pretty obvious what we saw. Yeah. We can, 
you can highlight it and, and let the viewers see for themselves here that, um, you know, prior to COVID, consumers were purchasing 70, 77% were purchasing flowers in the US, 81 in the UK and 84. And it's, it's obviously um, heavier in the Europe and UK um, because the European mindset is flowers are right up there with bread, milk and eggs. And, um, you know, we're trying to, with the Joy of Fresh, uh, change that mindset here in the US. Um, but you can see the drop and over across the board, we lost approximately 25 to 35 percent of our loyal purchasers during the pandemic. And a lot of that is due to less frequent shopping trips um, changing traffic patterns within the grocery store, floral departments that have been downsized, um, SKUs that have been rationalized. Uh, so yeah. as you... Yeah. Quickly get... Uh, that's also in one of the slides, right? What you just said. Let me check. Yeah. Uh, I think this is... Yeah. So... Um, more than half of the U.S. and U.K. say they've bought less flowers, houseplants, and balloons since the COVID-19 outbreak, uh, which is roughly 54 to 57 percent. But in Germany, it is only 36 percent um, say they were buying uh, less flowers. Um, the reason for these comparisons is just to show, not to show the extreme disparity, <laughs> but it's to just show that, yes, it's dropped off and we all know it. We've all seen it, um, but it doesn't have to stay that way. Um, I hope it doesn't stay that way. <laughs> no, I, I don't. I, I hope it doesn't because um, I'll be out of a job yeah. <laughs> and I don't want that to happen. Um, my life's passion has been poured into the industry. So um, I want to make sure that um, it survives along with yeah. a lot of our friends out there. Yeah. A great message from Willy uh, Amalini. He is saying, I normally get flowers for free and while we enjoyed them, uh, they were not special. I asked my wife to buy flowers each week since COVID-19 to support the industry. And we have a renewed appreciation of flowers. Uh, that's that's great. That's awesome, Willy. And, and yes, I, I can see that... Uh, you know, now is the time to jump on board. If you haven't been a normal purchaser, now's yeah. the time to, to get your, get your foot in the game and, um, support, support your peers. Yeah, actually that's, that's what, uh, I noticed. And, and not only me, uh, Peter Landman was noticing it as well, that yeah. a lot of people had flowers around them, uh, yesterday during the round table talks. Um, well, for us, it's for me, it's normal. I'm surrounded. But what I've noticed is um, a lot of our colleagues who are not, you know, Becky and I are the floral team, but yeah. all of our colleagues have united behind us um, and united behind the industry to incorporate flowers each week, fresh flowers into, you know, their virtual backgrounds. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, it's really, really heartening. Um, to see that um, it, it's a good feeling. Yeah, uh, it, it really is. Uh, shall I uh, get the next slide in and then I'll hide myself again? Okay. I'm trying to think where, which slide are you on? Reasons for, reasons uh, for pur purchase. No, the, the, the places where it's purchased. Right. Uh, during, since COVID so, so this is an interesting slide because um, it shows it shows the breakdown of where flowers are being purchased, and um, you can see the drop off, the extreme drop off from flower shop to florist um, to nineteen percent, because most of them have been closed or their wholesalers have um, done uh, have shut down to very minimal capacity or had to because the floral shops are closed. 42% um, uh, normally in the grocery store, that's usually a lot higher. Um, the Costco's and the BJ's and the large uh, box stores, 30%. Um, 
you can still I don't you can still see a 53 and 50 percent uh, from that supermarket grocery store in the UK and Germany, but we dropped to 42 percent. Um, online, we sh we we should see this change again yeah. um, to go up to 19, go up be at 19 percent. I see that number rising up very fast, especially yeah. based from what we heard yesterday uh, from the e-commerce sector on the call. Yeah. Yeah, everybody, even the week before, they were also telling that e-commerce was up, uh, not with 100%, but much more even. Uh, for some of them, of course, uh, we're not talking about everybody. Uh, so that's 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 great. Um, what do I have here? Uh, reasons for purchasing less floral products. Yeah. yeah, and this is, you know, this is glaring. Um, and And it's, they're not top of mind. I'm shopping less frequently. Hey, if I don't have to go to the grocery store, I don't want to. Um, it's a very, I, I have loved grocery shopping for years. Um, it's a chore now. It's not a joy. So um, it's a challenge. Uh, and I think that's evident when you look across the board here. They're not top of mind. People have a lot of other things they're worrying about. Um, I'm, and here's one that we need to we need to really break the stigma. I'm concerned about their safety and cleanliness. There's no studies that show that flowers and or produce um, can carry COVID-19. Yeah, that's actually something we we should work on. I think it was yeah. uh, we had a uh, oh it was with a lily grower. And we were talking about, uh, or somebody said, okay, I have a cat. I don't buy lilies. Yeah. And he said, uh, it's not true, but I'm not totally sure. And But the whole world knows, or the whole world heard the story about uh, their cat got sick or killed. Even uh, a veteran, so it's a very difficult uh, word for a Dutch guy. Uh, a pet doctor, <laughs> let's call him like that. <laughs> <laughs> Veteran, veterinarian. Yeah, that one. <laughs> I remember that that's a challenging word for my Dutch friends. <laughs> I might have to get them to say it a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. But they also uh, directly think it's involved with lilies. So, uh, But there's no study showing that it really harms a cat. Uh, so I turned it the other way around. I said, why don't you, as a, the whole group of lily growers, Make a study out of it, so at least you can show that it's uh, maybe uh, maybe it, it is like that, but it's already out on the internet everywhere. But if it isn't, you can put the study on the internet as well and saying, okay, look, we, we've tested it and it's not true. And like like with this as well, uh, yeah, flowers and plants they don't carry COVID nineteen. Let's study and make a study out of it and show it to the people. And we do have um, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Max, who's our um, science and tech uh, expert uh, at PMA, has done that for produce uh, yeah. and for flowers. So um, if anyone's looking for that research, I'm happy to share that. Okay, yeah, that's great. Because yeah, the, the more information we have around this theme, right. uh, the better. Right. We need to educate the consumer and the rest of the public who can be falsifying things that really could hurt the industry. Yeah. Also, one thing I see going on in the chat is about uh, the slogan uh, you have and other people saying, we have this slogan, we have that slogan. Um, bringing uh, the inside in, bringing the outside in, uh, sorry. It's a slogan, uh, Juan Novit says, uh, I love. Uh, Alison Bradley, I know, is uh, doing great things with... Uh, a, uh, the, the hashtag United Through Flowers. United Through Flowers. Yeah, maybe the, the, it's good to combine those things. I don't know, but we need to get out to all the people. It doesn't matter if we're promoting uh, lilies, uh, roses or whatever, or from Europe, Africa, South America, America. We ne just need to bring out the message in the right way at the moment. Right, and there, there's a lot of them out there. Um, you know, there's flower power. There's bond with flowers. I think Acerca Flores yeah. uh, has, um, and Ball Horticultural have done uh, a bond with flowers. So that was used very early on. Um, yeah. <laughs> and we started with the 
buy flowers, not toilet paper over there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. there's been some hashtag evolution. Um, yeah. that I think we've seen, but regardless, I think each one of those is there's passion behind that. And yeah. we just want people to buy more flowers. That's, that's the most important message. And we, it, it would be great if the whole world could send out the same message and then add their own hashtags or their own campaign as well. Well, how- maybe we need to set up a brainstorming session um, just for that reason. Um, yeah. A global brainstorming session. Yeah, I mean every uh, country has its own culture, so you can you can play a bit with it. But if we send out the message all over the world, I mean the brand Coca Cola is the same all over the world, sending right. uh, the same message, maybe in a slightly different way because of culture, but they're sending out the same message, so it's very strong. Actually, Allison is saying it was me that uh, talked about the cat and uh, they love to eat the flowers and the plants. But I also told you, Allison, just give them some food so they will not harm your flowers and plants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Piet van Kampen has the same uh, problem. Is <laughs> I have like garden. Yeah. Okay, so I don't think the Dutch flower, the the food for the Dutch cats is is that good. <laughs> Apparently not. Yeah. We need to we need to take a look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, I still have some other slides. Uh, let me see. I need glasses, by the way, I think. Reasons for purchasing more uh, floral products. That's an important one, I think. Yeah, this is a great slide. And so um, when you read the comments, uh, they make me happy. Houseplants give me something to do, something to focus on other than the news. Um, uh, or three, I'm spending more time at home and want to spruce up my environment, my surroundings. Um, the joy of floral products continues to be great marketing message for the industry to rally behind. And we just talked about that. Um, we're going to talk, like I said, we're going to dig into this, uh, pretty deeply next week on the call. Um, but I, I'm hoping that we can see a lot more of this. Uh, as we move into the summer celebrations. Yeah. I mean, the, the, like uh, some of the retailers already said, uh, the summer uh, looks good for them uh, in terms of people. Uh, yeah, they're at home all the time. So, and they're right. in the garden all the time. So they want to make it nice as well. Right. If I have to stay here, if I can't go on vacation, um, I'm going to, I'm going to make the best environment I can possibly, I can possibly make. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whether it's garden, uh, and we heard the focus, there's a lot more emphasis on garden. Traditionally, garden, uh, spring and summer garden sales stop, or they slow down um, as we get to 4th of July. And yeah. they're pretty much cleared out by then um, until September when the chrysanthemums start filtering back chrysanthemums, pansies, and hardier products start filtering back into the market. But I yeah. think we'll see a continuation in particular on food food items that you can grow at home, whether it yeah. be mescaline lettuce or herbs. Um, we're seeing a huge demand for those items. And oftentimes when you go to look for them, they're sold out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But there's a real interest coming back into gardening, into flowers, mm-hmm. plants, and yeah, back into nature. Actually. People are nesting, people are homesteading. They're realizing, hey, I don't need to go to the grocery store. I can grow this. Yeah. Um, and so. yeah, some people finally start to realize where things are coming from. And uh, right. actually, as an industry, we have great stories to tell about it. We do. Um, we really do. I mean, um, we've got so many products and every pro- product has a, its own great story. That's the joy of fresh right there. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's my joy. I'm shameless. I'm, shameless. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, but actually that's, that's what I'm doing all the time with the flower circus, telling those stories to the people. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and you can see the, the, the smile on people's faces and that they know more about the product and they're more confident to either to buy it or to sell it. And that's, that's very important. I'm not really sure how I can even talk about flowers without smiling. Um, 
and I've been doing this talk for a long time <laughs> and just talking about the products and the passion and the people that are behind this industry um, makes me smile. Yeah. And I hope it makes other people smile. Yeah. And if they don't smile up with the flowers, I will just put up my high hat and do it a crazy <laughs> dance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Willie is also adding something uh, quite interesting regarding Mother Day, Mother's Day sales. I spoke with one of the largest bouquet makers in the US and they were only down 10% over last year. That's impressive. Um, to be only down 10% as the, one of the largest bouquet makers year over year, I would give myself a huge pat on the back because yeah. a lot went into getting to that only 10% down, um, yeah. the execution and the challenges in the production lines. Um, you know, there's things that we don't even think about what happens before the flowers reach the retailer. Um, those production lines, those bouquet lines are very tightly packed um, with workers and yeah. they've had to separate them to at least six feet, sometimes even more. Uh, people had fears of going to work. Uh, or losing their jobs, if yeah. they brought in temps, so they brought in their family members. We heard stories um, that just really were very impactful um, on how challenging the holiday was going to be, yeah. not just from a production standpoint, an airlift standpoint. Um, we heard we heard the challenges, and to hear the positivity um, from seven of the U.S. biggest retailers um, was amazing. Yeah. And that was a collective effort, a collaborative effort across the entire floral supply chain to make yeah. that happen. We're not in the easiest industry, but this uh, made us do things uh, that happened that we didn't even thought it was possible. Right. I, I, I think there were a lot of things that we thought weren't humanly possible or um, strategically possible or um, engineering uh they would be engineering feats at this juncture um, during this crisis, um, but they made it happen. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I mean, I think most of us seen the pictures with uh, airplanes where normally the passengers were sitting and now there were boxes of flowers <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. And, I uh, think I posted one of those that was uh, from Avianca Air Airlines and uh, yeah. it was wonderful to see that the flowers were First class passengers, um, yeah. <laughs> making it making it to the U.S. for Mother's Day. Yeah, without champagne though, but uh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> without full service. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they couldn't press the button to get the, the service. So that's <laughs> mm, no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wim is asking, and then we can go to the next slide because uh, this directly refers to the next slide. What will the flower industry look like in the future? Wow. Um, yeah, I, I think we're going to see a lot of changes. Um, I think we'll see, unfortunately, a lot more consolidation. I think yeah. we'll see a lot more e-com, but I think we'll see, um, a lot more, um, value, <laughs> hopefully value placed on, um, the flowers yeah. and, and what they bring. Um, you know, the online, I, I think retailers are going to have to get very creative and pivot to meet the customer where they need to be. Um, and, and we'll see a lot of that. Uh, I hope we see a lot of it this summer, Yeah. um, so that the industry can keep this momentum going. Yeah. Um, I know we're not going to stop driving, uh, and supporting the industry to meet them where they need us to be. Um, but I think we're going to see some changes yeah. um, and we are going to see some consolidation and some people going out of business, but I think we're all going to have to get very creative um, and come up with new ways, whether it's curbside pickup, whether it's, um, you know, bundling of products, creating value added packages for yeah. the consumer um, that can bring joy, a box of joy or, um, you know, a bundle of joy, yeah. uh, however you want to look at it. I I'm, I'm excited to see what the suppliers and what the retailers will come up with. 
I've got as a former retailer and, and uh, buyer and supplier, I've got some ideas. Um, and I hope that we see them come to fruition in the marketplace because yeah. to keep the industry going, we're going to have to get creative. Yeah, I think uh, we also need to keep in mind that we've got a whole new uh, group of people who started to be interested in flowers. Right. Uh, and we need to take care that they've got no idea about flowers, about names of flowers, things like that. Right. And one of the things that, that happened in Holland, uh, we were always talking about the Latin names of, of plants and things like that. But we never showed uh, people like, okay, this one is attracting bees or uh, butterflies, or this one has a very nice scent. And in Holland, there was a grower, and it's also a garden center. Now who's selling these boxes? And it's called the Buzzy Bee that's attracting bees and butterflies. He has a box of perfume, and that's with uh, plants in it. Love with it. Smell. People directly know what they're buying. I mean, this is great. They don't need to know the names of the plants. No. The scientific names are, irre are just irrelevant. Yeah. Um, but to create um, a package vi and make it visual, because yeah. this is a very visual industry. Yeah. We're all attracted to things that are brightly colored and... Um, in particular, the the natural pollinators and the the aromatic flowers or the aromatic herb box, or I think there's huge opportunities for us to take advantage of that and to educate the customer away from the away from the scientific uh, names that we're, we all know. Yeah. Uh, but only the agronomists and the horticulturalists and, and the scientists yeah. in the industry really need to care about. But yeah. let's treat the consumer, um, let's meet them where they are and yeah. where their mindset is. I mean, we sometimes sound like a doctor with all our Latin names. Right. And uh, if he says, yeah, this and this happened in Latin, and then you think, what's happening? And then he said, yeah, you, bro you broke your leg. Okay, I know that. <laughs> then I know what's <laughs> happening. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the, it's sometimes the same what we do with flowers and plants. Um, yeah, and I think when you listen to some of these names of flowers, you know, whether it's uh, it, it, some, I was walking somewhere with somebody and I said, oh, that's Australitia. And she said, what? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, bird of paradise. Yeah. Um, so um, part of the banana family. But the, just to give those education things to somebody, oh, they learned something new today. But yeah. Um, I love the thought of of those bundles of that visual of the pollinator box or or the perfume box or the aromatic herb box or you know. Yeah. Juan uh, from Naranjo is also asking you. It's a, it's a long question, so I will read it because you can't see everything in the screen. Laura, are supermarkets also thinking to improve their displays of flowers in their shops and online websites with the good sales they are expecting for coming period? Uh, this will help boost, of course, but want to know if they are thinking as of this as well. Hi, Juan. I think we'll hear um, we'll hear from the retailers uh, as we continue the calls. Um, but if they're not thinking about reinventing where they need to meet the customer, if your if your floral department's uh, square footage has been cut down, which in almost every retailer it's been reorganized to accommodate social distancing traffic patterns, yeah. all these new, all these new terms we're learning about. Um, if you are not taking advantage of, um, you know, the checkout lanes or other points of sale in the store or tweaking a display to capture the customer's attention on that brief shopping trip when they're getting there, yeah. I think, I think you better take a good look at it. And I think yeah. we'll see a lot of that. And so from the supply side, from your perspective, I really think that um, I'm anxious to see what some of the suppliers will come up, whether it's a new merchandising vehicle, um, you know, a, a new piece of a new hard good that um, is easily transportable and less breakable. Yeah. Um, I think we really need to be reinventing the yeah. floral department. Uh, it's just, I think, when you will also have some ideas because you're asking this, uh, just sit down with uh, your customer and, and discuss those things. Right. I mean, uh, together, it's always two no more than one. Right. And I, I know I always appreciated when my supply partners 
um, would say, hey, what do you think of this? You know, what do you think we can do with this? Yeah. Um, because then it really becomes a, a partnership between the the retailer and the supplier. Um, and that matters. Yeah. It matters yeah. a lot. Uh, Willie is uh, adding, uh, this is our big chance to increase purchases. People are home and therefore they appreciate the products. That's that's. Uh, totally true. Juan David is saying during this time, flowers should be everywhere in the store. Yeah, why don't we use uh, flowers and plants as dividers to keep people uh, six feet apart? So in, in some of the retailers here in the U.S., we're seeing that um, in particular, um, without naming names, I'm seeing them use uh, wet shipper displays to kind of channel traffic. Yeah. So there's an idea right there, you know, yeah. drop six shippers of, um, you know, a couple big bunch palms or whatever it is, um, roses or because we're going to come into a, a, a big season of a big push on roses as we come into the yeah. summer where we'll see some. Uh, and I think if we're not getting creative with offering value, whether it's a BOGO, whether it's um, buy a dozen roses, get get a candle free or, you know, some some sort of if the retailers aren't thinking like that, um, they need to be to capture those impulse yeah. sales that we have lost during this time yeah yeah we need to, need to make up for it and and a good uh, period to do it because uh, especially for retailers what was a period of, of not that much sales was summer so that could be a great period to make up right and and if you know i think we people aren't going to be able to take the vacations that they nor i mean i know i just had to cancel a, an airbnb stay for a wedding that was taking place this summer yeah. Weddings now move to August, and we'll see if that happens. Um, but so, you know, we've got to take advantage. Why don't we come up with a, a floral cation, a flower cation, yeah. a garden cation? Um, because we're not going to have that traditional vacation um, no. that we would think about. And it's great to get people off their computers, telephones, and that they do yeah. things. Because the first week, it's all nice to be on Facebook, Instagram, and whatever. But after that, people <laughs> want after that people want to do some things as well. And and there was uh, there was a designer in Hong Kong I was talking to last week, and he made specially for children. He made a DIY box, so children with their parents could make a bouquet or in a small arrangement. I mean, this is also something uh, that could work. It's it's. I was putting together a PowerPoint for next week's call, and the DIY um, the DIY concept. We've got to take advantage of that. Whether it's um, again going back to the bundling or giving the consumer, you know, um, uh, an easy fix for something at home. Yeah. You know, and a, a good example. And it's not food related is you can't buy yeast anywhere. People have yeah. gone to home, bake home bread. Um, I'm a baker and I couldn't find yeast anywhere. I had to go up to a wow. local store, local market and talk to the head baker and say, can I buy a little bit of yeast from you <laughs> since I can't find any commercial yeast on Amazon or anywhere else? So yeah. people are resorting. You know, I think we're going to see a lot of canning. We're going to see a lot of, um, you know, doing your doing your own arrangement maybe it's a bouquet that you give them five different ways to look at it or five yeah. different ways to break it up yeah if you're looking for value break that bouquet up put some in the bathroom put some in the in the kitchen put some in your office and look how much uh spread you got for that one big bunch bouquet yeah yeah that, that, that's totally true i mean uh, we need to help them out. That's that's one thing for sure. I think Absolutely. a lot of people forgot to be creative, forgot to uh, what to do with flowers or with plants because it was well, too easy just to buy it. Right. It's too easy just to buy it, buy it already ready-made. I think we'll also see a change in, um, you know, we're going to see some changes in store labor. So there won't be that opportunity for the retailer to have that full-time floral lead in the department's to yeah. create the upgrades, to do the arrangements. And I think we're going to be looking at a lot more um, supplier-driven uh, grab-and-go yeah. items. And I think that's a great, that's going to be a great way to move flowers, especially when we think about the curbside pickups that we heard about yesterday. Um, all the yeah. restaurants are doing it. 
why aren't we doing it with flowers? And why don't we partner with some of the restaurants that have been closed to yeah. do that? Yeah, that was one of my shout outs as well. If you, there are a lot of restaurants selling food and, and why doesn't the restaurant sell a romantic dinner for two? So you surprise your husband or your girlfriend and you join up with the restaurant and you say, okay, we, we add in a 12 or a dozen of roses. A date night box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> success <laughs> guaranteed success <laughs> I'm glad you went there yeah. I was going to but you know what I like to keep my job yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't say what success so there will be success somehow <laughs> um, but I love that I love I love that bundling of things because yeah. a lot of the retailers I'll give an example here in the state of Pennsylvania, the governor just approved restaurants to be able to sell mixed drinks to go. So um, now I'm going to see restaurants bundling, you know, uh, the martini special box or, and, okay. and it's, maybe it's paired with um, a mix of olives and exotic cheeses or something. I think we have to start thinking that way yeah. and not just from a food, but, um, to me, food, flowers, and fun go all together. And yeah. um, I've, I've spent my life uh, counting on that. People ask, ask, what do you do for a living? And I say, I specialize in the five Fs, food, flowers, fabric, furniture, and fun. And so we've got to take advantage of those things. Yeah. Um, love the date night box. Hashtag success. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're giving a lot of free advice today, John. Yeah, well, I, think, I think we have to stop. I mean, Juan David has already said, divide is a great idea. Okay, you know, that, that's now two cups of coffee, uh, Juan. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a cake. <laughs> oh, but you see, if you just sit down uh, and, and just discussing things, you already get so many ideas. Yeah, yeah, just that collective brainstorming is is going to be really important. Um, again, it goes back to, you know, the suppliers and the retailers and even the breeders, uh, the solution providers, uh, whether it's a sleeve, a box, a package, a shipper, whatever, a display unit, whatever it is, yeah. um, we've got to create um, that synergy together um, to keep the customer engaged, educate them about the product, and have them continue to enhance the outside and bring the outside in. Yeah, yeah, that's that's for sure. We've got one slide left: the future floral uh, purchases. I want to show to the people. So I think I I what this slide is is really indicating is where the anticipation and these are this this sentiment is coming from the consumer so um where they anticipate future flower purchases uh and we see um it's either less same or more and um a lot of them anticipate um they'll do less it says less in the supermarket grocery store i don't know whether i agree with that but um, garden supply store, uh, where do we see more examples? We see more in the garden supply and local nursery store. And that goes back to that focus on garden, homesteading, being able to grow your own vegetables or herbs or um, uh, the uh, pollinators um, box. And, and then hardware stores, while well, Lowe's and Home Depot here in the U.S. have been really the only garden center that's been open. Some states shut down garden centers altogether. Yeah. We see a lot increase um, from online and um, online flower markets. Uh, I think we're going to have FTD, a representative from FTD on the call next yeah. week, which would be very interesting. Um, we're still kind of waiting for the confirmation on that. But... Um, and we see more coming into um, online grocery, like Fresh Direct or Peapod. The, yeah. the retailers are getting creative, where once they only might have had one SKU or no SKUs, they're going to rethink. 
They're yeah. going to rethink and say, what can I put in the online um, online portfolio that is going to have the shelf life and present a good customer experience? So that's going to go back to the suppliers to get creative um, yeah. and to push the retailers to put those things in their online um, platform. Yeah, I think there, there are a lot of possibilities. And, and uh, because of COVID-19, uh, we, we can see them now. Or we see them more easily because the figures uh, jump up and down that much at the moment. So we can see where there is uh, opportunities. And, and the only thing is we need to grab them because normally the flower business is uh, we need to finish today and then we see what happens tomorrow. But we need to keep looking further what, what what's going to happen. And yeah, I think because we've we've been in this, um, and you could see it yesterday in um, the, the the IRI slides that were presented. That's another we partner with IRI to give us um, quarterly data. Uh, and this industry has been so holiday driven yeah. that we 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 get over the curve and then we rest on our laurels. We get over the curve. Yeah. And we, oh, we made it. <laughs> um, we can't. We cannot, it's got to be all gas, no brakes. We got to yeah. keep pushing and reinventing ourselves to keep the customer engaged and keep the industry engaged. Yeah, we got to hang our hat on those holidays because if you don't make the holidays in the industry, you're not making it, period. Yeah. Um, and that's that goes on both sides of the fence, supply or buy. Yeah. Um, but we, we got to stop that, you know, we, yeah. we, we get up to the top of the curve and we go down the curve. We've heard a lot of curve discussions these days. Flatten the yeah. curve. We can't flatten the curve. The curve goes flat and, and a lot of it's production driven as well. But um, what do we do in those times when we're not holiday centric? How yeah. do we keep the ball rolling? Um, Maybe so. we just need to come, come up with a new holiday. That's been done before. Yeah, so <laughs> why not again? <laughs> um, I, you know, you watched how International Women's Day took off. There was a lot of industry push behind that. Yeah. Um, that's not something that was U.S., um, very U.S. popular or U.S. specific. In my career, I've watched it on a steady climb every yeah. year, year over year. And so you've seen how that has really help the trend to keep the customer engaged and keep the floral industry moving through those unholiday times. Yeah. I mean, there's a, a Dutch man, uh, Charles Landhuizen in, in Italy. He started with a grandparents day over there, just very locally in his own town. And now, uh, I don't know, but almost all of Italy, Slovenia is celebrating that as well. So it's even getting more international. And, and why not? I mean, we need more celebrations, I think. We do. And I think in, if this, you know, <laughs> a lot of us haven't lived, I'm going to say a boomer age, haven't really lived through a crisis other than 9-11 here in the U.S., yeah. um, but a global pandemic, this is something that makes us take a step back. Take a step back and, you know, be grateful and um, celebrate yeah. things like we wouldn't because we were so busy going, 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 going. Now everyone's got to stay, stay quiet, stay put. Yeah. So um, celebrations become all that more important, whether it's family or friends um, or just, or just because, and we heard that again yeah. yesterday on the call that just because purchase has increased two to 3%, which I think is wonderful. Yeah, yeah, it really is. People are much more thoughtful. I mean, it's not the last minute uh, call or a, a buy online. It's two weeks in advance already. Right. So people got more uh, thoughtful as well, and that's that's great. Yeah, and if we are more thoughtful to those around us and we're grateful for those around us, I think um, this is this is a good opportunity to take that time um, to just because. Yeah, yeah, it really is. I think it's uh, some great words uh, to end uh, this flower circus talks. I mean, what better than just because and with a big smile on our face. 
exactly. looking bright at the future. And uh, we'll appreciate each other more. We will appreciate the flowers more. And uh, that's something we, we have to work on, of course. Uh, but we will, uh, we will do. And uh, we will get better out of this, for sure. We will, because yeah. we're all in this together. Yeah, that's true. Uh, everybody, thank you very much for watching. Uh, of course, uh, Laura, thank you very much uh, for joining us. It was a great honor to have you in the Flower Circus Talks. John, thanks for having me. Yeah. Tomorrow, uh, we're going to do something crazy. We're going to do our first online flower show with Mark Frank. So don't miss it because uh, it's going to be an hour packed full of fun, flower facts. Everything is there. Uh, we even have a special guest. Cannot uh, tell you who it is, but uh, you will see him. So I uh, hope to see you tomorrow. Uh, take care and stay safe. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.